Shantacharya's language from the very beginning is clear and apparently functional. It is a precision of choice among ordinary words that matters. Not this word, not that word, but the right word that forms itself in air before us. Since not this, not that, Shantacharya has written four more books of poetry. The second book published in England in 1995 was Numbering Our Day's Illusions, another title that illustrates her developing concern with truth and understanding. This was followed by Looking In, Looking Out in 2005, a title whose structure echoes out of Not This, Not That. And in 2006, Shringara, a book whose title point, found at the end of the book, tells talks of preparing for illusion, I quote, I travel towards what end I cannot say, Along the way, those I meet and those I do not, all the things that happen to me and those that do not, keep defining me in some inexplicable way. Poetry, said Robert Frost, begins in delight and ends in wisdom. The fine distinctions that lie at the heart of Shantacharya's poetry tend ever more to wisdom. In the book we are celebrating, dreams that spill the light, the poet spends much time traveling. They visit Italy, China, Russia, Nigeria, Afghanistan, and other places. The first 14 poems are written from the point of view of a visitor confronting puzzling contrasts, the apparent yeas and nays that constitute the world. Contrasts between magnificence and poverty, beauty and ugliness, humaneness and cruelty. Time and again, these qualities are weighed against each other in a spirit of not this, not that. Although by now the poet is less surprised, more meditative. The diction the words use remains in the range of everyday conversation. It is the eye and the ear, the ear of the sound, that carries the intelligence forward. The longest, most ambitious of the poems consists of five parts. It is about the Sundarbans, the largest mangrove forests in the world. In the first part we find these lines. Men dispossessed foray into its forests for food, fish, honey, fresh berries, wood, even tied apart, rich relics. The strong and fearless enter this immense archipelago of islands. The poems do refer now and then to the sense of miracle. Entering the immense archipelago is an analogy for the voyage into miracle that the poem all poems set out on. Poems begin with a cry and form it into a journey, moving from miracle to wisdom. But it is not the end of the journey, but the journey itself, the journey of the cry that makes a poem. We should imagine the world as the archipelago of the poem. And now we should enter it with the poet herself, Shanta Chahir. Thank you. strikes me particularly um, in various ways, in various poems, is the way that she addresses a particularly modern uh, situation or predicament, that is, and that is the predicament of being non-rooted, uh, not rooted in place, not rooted necessarily in family either. And the way that Shanta's poems addresses that issue seems to me often very brave and, and very thoughtful. It's a, a condition of being adrift in the world and she approaches that sometimes with evident pain but also with a lot of humour as we've heard. The CD um, offers particular pleasures you might think, well, I could buy the books, and indeed you could, and I hope you would. But what a CD gives you is the voice of the poet. And um, I think somebody said, in relation perhaps to Dylan Thomas's poetry, that poets write for their own voice, meaning their actual, physical, audible voice. And um, I think that is very true in Shanta's case. Her voice, as you've heard, is clear, it's graceful and musical. And um, I may be wrong, but I, 
I sense in the voice something of the Indian tradition of recitation, um, whether of sacred texts or secular poetry. There's some, something in the tone of the voice that um, seems to me to continue in that tradition. I feel that every um, poet should, if their poems are to be heard, read the poems themselves. Um, and that's not always done on the radio, but I think uh, when it is, it's always an enlightening take on the poems. So I strongly recommend the CD to you. It also looks beautiful. Um, and there's a very generous selection of poems in it. Thank you, Thank you.